Hey everyone, it's Friday. Just heading home from work. Chippy ATV here, another YouTuber. He's like, hey Tin Man, we got some. Let's see if we could get that in there. Power saws. Thanks, buddy. I really appreciate it. No problem. Donate to the channel and uh, it's entertainment and gives this guy some something to do in his spare time. It's awesome. Good to be alive Friday. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. No problem. Pretty cool. A couple of Canadian boys at a Tim Hortons parking lot, eh? <laughs> That's so Canadian. Okay, what are we doing today? Uh, I'm going to port this home light. This is the 130 we've been working on. We've timed it. I got it all ripped apart here. We gotta, we gotta make, the, we gotta make this one like this one. So we're, we're getting ready, just getting the juices flowing. Uh, I think of porting like artwork. Got to be in the mood. Hands got to feel right. You got to have the right music. I, I'm just like that. So I feel good today. I have a plan. I've thought about it. Uh, usually I don't just go into a saw and start tearing into it. I think about what the saw does, how it runs, what kind of RPM I want. I look at the cases, I look at the transfers. What can we do to these transfers to make them flow better or more efficiently or give it more air? These are all the things that you want to do when you port a saw or a dirt bike or a snowmobile, any of the, any of the two stroke stuff. So uh, I'm feeling good today. I'm going to get to grinding. Uh, we'll jump in and out as I do it. And uh, I'd like to have this saw more or less assembled um, by the end of the day. And uh, and then we are, we're going to start on this one. I think I'm going to go more radical on this one. Uh, just because there are some differences between the 130 and the 76. Uh, the 76 from what I can see, I've, I've got a few of them here now to measure. They need a lot more work um, to rock and roll. So at 76, I'm going to do some pretty heavy machine work and uh, transfers, exhaust port. You guys will see. We're going to go right into that thing. But I want to get this one done first. This one, this is the 130. This is the 130 this guy here I really like this font over the 76 it just it looks cooler to me okay so this is the 130 and we this is a good strong running saw it pulls chain it's kind of slow so what we're gonna do is we're gonna speed this saw up without losing torque not easy to do but I'm up to the challenge I want to see I want to see how much work it takes now that we've blown one up, we just, we did that for fun. Uh, I'm still getting emails, you know, people are a little confused why I would do that. Because it's hot rod stuff. You guys ever see a drag car blow up? <laughs> All the time, right? Because those guys are pushing the limits. They're doing stuff that most people say you shouldn't do, but they're making horsepower. The only way to port a saw is to blow a few up if you've never done one before or if... If you can't phone a buddy and say, hey, how much power will these bearings take? The only way to know is to put enough power to the bearings that they let go. Or the bottom end. A couple of you guys were discussing the bottom end. That bottom end is no good. Home lights do have side-to-side -side slop, uh, radial and axial slop. They do have a little radial slop. You can feel it. Uh, that one, though, it goes clunk, 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 clunk. Where, where's the saw? Let's have a look at it again. When you guys ask questions, I'd like to show you. I'm going to put you back down. Here's the one that we blew up. You hear that? It's got up and down play. Side to side, this is normal. Okay. These are a little sloppier than a modern chainsaw. Okay. But I have enough of these here now. Um, remember, I have like many of these here now and I can compare I can compare slop in all of them if if three of them have a little bit of slop and this one has lots this one's no good you can see you can see where this thing was starting to let go and it was guys uh, I wouldn't show you that I, w I wouldn't show you that if I didn't think it was true I don't want to mislead anybody but 
there was here i'll bring you back up here there was something going on with that bottom end i don't know I don't know if that bottom end was just on its way out. It didn't particularly get hot, but I think we mashed it a little. And maybe when we caught the ring, it just, uh, anything's possible. We we don't know. Maybe the bottom end let go and caused it to catch the ring. That That is something I was thinking about. It's very possible. We don't know. We can't see inside an engine at 12, 13,000 RPM. And if anything hits at 13,000 RPM, that's a lot of force on the piston, the rod, the bearings. So we don't know, right? You guys were discussing it and I just thought I'd jump back in and, and say, hey, this is what I think. Does, is what I think right all the time? No. But I look at things scientifically and I let what I see tell me what went wrong with the saw. So, and that's it. All we can do is take our best guess and move forward. The rod's sloppy in that thing now. The, uh, you know, you guys saw the ring catch and we caught, we caught on the bridge. There you go. I, I don't know guys, maybe the rod let go or maybe it caught the ring and caused the rod to let go. We don't know. So keep, keep discussing things amongst yourselves. Uh, I, I like that. I get ideas from me, from you guys. So this is a, I learn all the time from your guys' comments. It's it's the truth. I'm not ever going to know everything. It's impossible. So, I know what I know, and I'm willing to learn what I don't know. That's that's just how I am. So, here we go. Home lights. I'm going to get to porting this. I got my timing wheel on. I got to get my exhaust roof height. I'm going to start at the exhaust roof at this. I'm going to recheck the squish. Just, I'm, I'm checking everything three, four, five times on this one. Because we want to make sure that this one doesn't blow up. Because we want good data on will these things run ported. Okay? So, this is where we're at. I'm going to get some music on. And I'll jump in and out with you guys. And, and we can see what I did after. I would also like to split one of these. And, and do some go fast moves to the crankcases. Um... I see areas where I can make huge improvement in one of these. So we're probably going to build three of these, maybe four. My brain has been going on this project for weeks, probably a month, really, month and a half. All I can think about is making these things go fast, making them angry. And what's cooler than an angry turd saw? Let's be honest here. Nothing. It's like having a big block in your rusty truck with a lift. That's cool, you know. So, anyhow, I'm going to get going on this. We will jump in and out. I'm going to retime it just, you know, for the sake of retiming it. It's been four or five days since I worked on this saw. I like to get my brain back in in, in the, the swing of things. So, I'm going to retime this saw. I'm going to double, triple check. Everything's good. And then I'm going to port it. I'll be back in a bit, guys. Just checking back in with you guys. I got the bib on. We've been... Grinding up a storm, got my transfers roughed in, opened up, and uh, feeling good about this one. You never know how a cylinder is going to grind until you grind it. And uh, we're making magic here in the old saw lab. Sorry, just cleaning up. Look, there's how, you guys said my bench is clean, not no more. <laughs> feeling good about this one. Trying to get max, maximum efficiency and get that air flowing up and over the piston. Just got to start, guys. When you start grinding, just gentle, even strokes, smooth strokes, and just, it, it takes a while. It, you know, it it took me an hour and a half of grinding to rough this in. Your hands might start getting numb uh, from the vibration. Take a break. You know, the uh, Rome wasn't built in a day, and, and just work at it. If you're just learning how to grind, just do it a little at a time. Gentle strokes. Don't go for deep cuts. Don't push on it. And uh, after a while, it'll just be done. So, there you go. We got these roughed in. And uh, we're making magic happen here. Okay, we're back here making progress. Got my cylinder on. Uh, piston, no rings. I gotta re-zero this thing. So what you want to do is put, put
put a nut on. I'm just showing you guys quick. I'll put all four on and, and do that off camera. But put put your, your nut on. That's one thing about these home lights. Pretty much every time you take this cylinder off, the back nut has to come out. You can't get at it with your timing wheel on. Uh, I guess I, if I'm going to do a lot of these, I'm going to make a custom 90 degree cross foot that I can get in there. Okay. Bolt your cylinder back down. Bolt your cylinder back down. 63 degrees was the number with this, right? So we'll talk, we'll, we'll turn it one way. We're a couple degrees off. I'll put the pointer at 63 degrees. I'll turn it back the other way. I just gotta loosen this off and this wheel's a, a little off center. Tighten this back down. Okay, where are we at here? 63. Now the other way. 63, okay? With our little piston stop here. Now, we, we, are, we are happy that this thing is zeroed. We're going to tighten it down without moving it. Our special ground down wrench, because a regular wrench doesn't fit in there. Again, these are a labor of love. They're not fast. Uh, these, these take a lot of time. The, these, uh, these builds are, are not for the faint of heart. There's, it's a lot of uh, labor. But with labor comes a lot of pride when it's done, right? So I did that. You know what I mean? So it, it's worth it. And uh, I'll do more of these. Okay, I put the piston at bottom dead center. I'm going to take my cylinder, take our ring, I want to get my, uh, my exhaust timing. Okay, I'm going to slip the ring in there, okay, see all the rings in there, put this back on there, and put this nut back on. We're, we're real close to assembly on this one, got to do a little bit of deburring after. These home lights really wear the divider in between the skirt or in between the transfers because it's rotating this way. The transfers are on the front and back of the piston, unlike a modern saw where the transfers are on the sides. So most of your wear is on your exhaust on a modern saw, right? It's going this way. The exhaust is here that those rings are hitting here and bearing on this side, right? Well, on a home light, the transfers are here. So you're going to notice a lot of these home lights have wear in between your, your two transfers. Right? Right here. See that? You're, you're going to notice wear on a lot of them. Most of the ones I've pulled apart are like that. So then it's up to you. Do you think the cylinder is going to last or do you want to buy an aftermarket one? Uh, I might just I might order a couple of those aftermarket ones and try them. But uh, I think OEM is best, and uh, I'm going to keep rocking these OEM cylinders for as long as I can. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to turn it. I'm going to turn this down here. I'm going to turn the wheel. There we go. There we go. I'm going to turn the saw backwards, okay? Look at that. You see the ring? So let me grab my fancy flashlight here. You guys see the ring in there? There you go. Okay. I'm turning the saw backwards. See the piston? It hits the ring. Now look what I'm doing here. These are just little tips to make it faster. Okay. My exhaust opens at 105. So I know that. So I'm going to read my wheel. I'm going to keep turning it. Now look. So let me get my flashlight. You see how the ring, this thing moved a little bit. You see how the ring, I can feel the tension there. The bottom of the ring is at the top of the exhaust port, which is 105 degrees. So all I'm doing here is I'm going to use, let me move this all the way. I'm going to use our timing wheel to set my roof. 
which will be the bottom of the ring or the top of the piston. Okay, so I'm going to set it up to where I want it, right there, and I'm going to turn the wheel back. Does that make sense? So you use your ring to set, to give you a reference mark. I mean, you can, you can measure it with a pair of calipers. Uh, you can measure the stroke of the piston and figure out how many degrees equals how many thousands. I do the ring trick because it's close enough. Make a line and don't grind past the line. And then that gives you a good square reference mark to go by. Does, it, does that make sense? That, that's how I do it. I find that's the, the easiest way. Okay, our piston's at bottom dead center. Okay. Where's our ring? See the ring? That's our new exhaust roof. Does, does that make sense, everybody? That's what I grind to. I will take my felt marker. You want a, a good quality felt marker, permanent, and draw a line in there. Okay. You want one with a fairly sharp tip. And I'm just going to go around the edge of the ring and draw a quick little line. Now, I'm going to let this thing dry. This is where I should clean my bench, but no, I'll probably do something else and make my bench dirtier. <laughs> so, that's what's going on right now. I'm going to wait for this to dry. Uh, I'm going to grind the exhaust. I'm going to do some finish work, uh, a little sanding, maybe a little polishing. I don't tend to polish much of anything. I don't want it super, super rough, but I don't want it super shiny. I'm, I'm just like that. If you want to polish things, uh, polish your exhaust over anything else. But again, just my opinion, guys. You you do what makes your saws run good. I'm going to do what makes my saws run good, or what I feel makes them run good. Um, a lot of guys argue about their way and my way, and I, I'm not like that. I can learn something from any builder. Every builder has tricks that I don't know. I'm going to have tricks that they don't know, and... You know, the more builders I meet and we swap ideas, we all get better and we all have more fun. That's what this is about. So, I'm having fun today. I got the tunes on, sitting at my grinding station over there and just just crank the tunes and let, let the chips fly. I love this stuff. I love showing it to you guys. It, it, it gets me up early in the morning and excited. Okay, I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to do a little grinding on the exhaust roof. Not much to it. We're getting there.